Hi, my guess is that you're a beginner to Montessori, you're just starting to set up shelves at home, or you would like to know more about starting a Montessori program at home. Now, getting started can be a little bit challenging. The internet is flooded with so much information. We go through Instagram and we see these beautiful pictures of the most perfect environment and that tends to be a little bit overwhelming for so many of us. We often wonder, are we going to be able to get it right? It looks like I don't know where to start. But I want to give you four very simple tips, just four tips that are going to help you to get started and get started successfully. My name is Jenny Amar and I'm the Master Trainer at Sunshine Teachers Training and I'm also a Montessori mom to triplet boys. My boys are now 18 years old but I have raised them the Montessori way and we have lived a Montessori life right from day one. Without further ado, let's get started with my tips. Tip number one is to observe. The Montessori philosophy evolved and developed through the observations made by Dr. Maria Montessori. You know she was a doctor before anything else and how did she discover what is it that children enjoy, what frustrates them, what excites them. All of this came about through her observations of children in the settings of the school that she had set up for them. So that's the first thing you're going to do is you're going to sit close by to your child, not too close, at a little bit of a distance and you're just going to watch your child. What are you watching out for? You're going to look and see what kind of toys does my child enjoy playing with? What kind of toys do they keep coming back to? What activities do they repeat? Which are the toys that they spend most time with and that cause them, that allow them to have deep concentration? The next thing you want to observe is what kind of motor activities do your child, do your children get involved in? Are they involved in the activities that require a lot of movement like jumping, hopping? There's some children who need a lot of gross motor movement. Uh, or is your child the one who wants to work with smaller objects? They're attracted to working with smaller things. Then you want to look out and observe is your child enjoying taking part in the day-to-day -day things that you do at home? What, if so, what are they? Do your children ask to help you when you're doing simple cooking activities? Do they enjoy taking part in cleaning up, wiping a table, uh, cleaning the windows, dusting? What is it that they enjoy as part of the daily skills that you do at home? Now the next part of observation is observing your home environment you're going to watch and see does my home environment support my child's independence or are there obstacles with that are coming in the way of my child's independence so what are we looking out for is my child able to reach everything or do they constantly have to ask me for help mommy can you give this to me mommy can you carry me mommy I need help to do this or to do that Write down the notes, whatever you observe, whatever comes to your notice, just make a note of that in a little book and we'll come back to that. You want to see how much your home environment is supporting your child's development or how much it is blocking your child's development of independence. This brings us to tip number two, organizing our home to support our child's independence. And how do we do this? It may sound very difficult, but it's really easy. It's just about making a few additions, a few modifications to allow your child to be able to do things by themselves. One of the most important things and the easiest things to access is a simple stool. Having a stool in the bathroom so that the child can use it to wash their own hands, brush their own teeth. Having a simple stool near the toilet so that the child can use the potty by themselves. Having a stool in the kitchen so the child can join you while doing simple cooking activities. There is a stool that I've seen a lot of people use. It wasn't around when I was raising my children, but it has a little railing around it so that when the child is standing by you in the kitchen at high counters, it isn't dangerous for them and they can help you with things like even washing the vegetables 
or you know a spooning activity or putting butter spreading butter things like that you want to have mirrors accessible to your children a mirror at your child's eye level in the bathroom in their bedroom so that they can see themselves when they are grooming themselves it's very important it may not seem important to us but for the child it's very important you need to rearrange their cupboards so that their day-to-day -day clothes are at a level where they can reach them don't keep too many things just a few things a couple of t-shirts a couple of shorts or skirts leggings whatever it is that your child enjoys wearing every day you want to have that on the bottom level of your cupboard. Uh, make sure that the clothing you're putting there is something that your child would be able to wear independently, not something with difficult buttons and snaps and zips that again they're going to need to ask you for help. Even the shoes that you have for daily use just going outside for a walk, it should be a shoe or a sandal that they could put on by themselves. Allowing and encouraging your child to do these simple home activities, these simple life skills, this is the start of Montessori at home. Trust your child. If you provide them with the right tools, with the right environment, you'll be amazed at the things that you will see them doing. Now we come to tip number three, decluttering and organizing your Montessori space. Now, Young children need a very neat and orderly environment to thrive. When they see that things are in their place and everything is neat and tidy, they feel a sense of calm and it's also easier for them to focus and concentrate. And I know a lot of parents complain about this and they ask me, how do I get my children to concentrate and focus? Really a lot of, a lot of it depends on the environment that's around your child. Is it calm and calming and peaceful for them in this environment? Are things orderly? That's one thing you need to look out for. The next thing we want to do is declutter. All of us, all of us, all of us have so many toys and so many materials for our children. And a lot of us pile them into a box or we cramp them into shelves and there's just too much. It's overstimulating for the children. They can't use so many things. They don't know where anything is. So we really want to declutter and we want to organize our toys um, so that the children can have easy access to it. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all those toy toys and put them into one big pile. This is our Marie Kondo of toys. We're going to Marie Kondo our toys and we want to make four separate piles. One pile is going to be the toys that are damaged, pieces are lost, uh, parts of them are broken. We're going to put all those toys into one pile. The next pile we're going to have are the toys that our children have outgrown. These are the toys that are still in good condition. They are still beautiful, but we want to give them away. We could choose to give them away to charity, to an orphanage. We could give them to friends. We could give them to family. Things that are still really good, but you know, our child has developmentally outgrown them. The next pile that we want to have are the toys that we are going to put into storage. Maybe these are toys that during your observation time you noticed your child is not really coming to them. Maybe they're toys that your child is not ready for yet, it's a little bit difficult for them or they haven't got the interest for this yet. So we're going to put them away for later and we'll bring them back when we feel that our child needs some fresh toys. And then finally your fourth pile is going to be the pile of toys that you will keep and you're going to put them on your shelf. Now we're ready to arrange our toys. We want to have even just one simple shelf. A lot of people get overwhelmed and they think they look at a Montessori classroom and they think I also need four or five shelves and a lot of space to set up. Absolutely not. Even one shelf can suffice. But that one shelf should have all your material organized very neatly and very orderly. When I say neatly, everything in its place, not cramped together, not too close together. And it should be arranged from uh, in groups. So if you have uh, all your puzzles, all your puzzles are on one shelf. If you have um, art equipment, that can be side by side on another level of the shelf. Um, if you have uh, 
you know, maybe blocks and things like that, all of those can go on one shelf. Also, you want to look at your toys and see which ones are easier and which ones are more difficult. So you would put your easier ones on the left and then as we go towards the right, they get progressively more difficult. Once you stand back and look at it, to your own eye, it should look pleasing, it should look very neat and very beautiful. Finally, we come to tip number four, invest in only what you need. You've already set up your shelf by now, you've decluttered, you know what toys you have that your children are going to use. So you can see what few items you would like to spend some money on and add to your Montessori shelves. Don't go crazy and buy too many things at one time. Not only is it overwhelming for your child, it's overwhelming for you to manage as well. So take it slowly, step by step, gradually. You'd be surprised that you have a lot of things actually that your child could use that are in your kitchen cupboards, that are in your drawers, put away there. So first of all, go and find and use what you already have. Simple boxes that the child can use for opening and closing. Um, little pouches sometimes we get with, which have zips on them. They can learn a lot from that. Locks and keys, the little ones that we use on suitcases for children above two and a half and three years. Those are interesting activities. Uh, pasta and shoelaces that the children can use for threading. Um, there are so many things, bowls, spoons, um, little tongs if you may have, a sponge. Using all of these things you can put together some valuable Montessori activities, baskets with clothes bags. So the first thing you want to do is see what you have and then you'll know what you want to invest in. Here are some of my personal recommendations of things that you want to buy. You definitely want to get that stool, a nice sturdy stool. It could be made of wood, it could be made of plastic. You also want to get some child appropriate utensils, simple small size butter knives, child sized tongs, spoons that are child sized as well. You want to get a mirror put into your home at the child's level so that they can take care of their daily needs and look into the mirror. Some good storybooks, good quality storybooks, um, preferably based on real stories. Good quality model animals that the children can use in many, many different ways. We actually have a video on our IGTV stories, if you'd like to go on and watch, on the different ways that children can use animals to learn. You want to have simple art materials, crayons, color pencils, play-doh, cutters for the play-doh. These are all very stimulating for the children. Arranged neatly in trays, um, different kinds of paper for the children to use. A few baskets, some clothes pegs. There are a lot of things that children will do with these materials and you can get started with those before you think of buying any actual Montessori materials. So here's my recap of the four important tips to getting started with Montessori at home. Firstly, you want to observe your child. Secondly, organize your home to suit your child's needs and to support their independence. Declutter and set up an orderly Montessori environment at home. And finally, invest in only what you need right now. So there you have it four very important tips to help you get started with Montessori at home. Don't overthink it. You're only going to stress yourself out. Your Montessori area will grow steadily and gradually with time. As I always say, be patient with yourself just as you would with your child. Everything happens in its own time and always important to follow the child. If you'd like to learn more and get notifications of our future videos, please subscribe to our channel. You can also visit our website. We have a lot of courses, long courses, short courses to help you become the Montessori guide that you would like to be. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments box below. I would love to hear your questions and I will be back to answer them. Until the next time we meet, have a beautiful day.